It is the Savage Nation. There's a lot of stories that are rattling around inside my brain. Soros' coming tax bill, and Apple may have to pay Ireland 10 years of back taxes. Oh, yeah. You didn't know that, huh? Mr. George Soros, who put Barry Obama in office, has been deferring taxes for many years by using every scheme known to mankind while telling you to pay your fair share. Does it sound familiar to you? George, uh, Warren Buffett, another one, another great American. He gets all sorts of deals from Obama, including shooting down the uh, Keystone XL pipeline because his trains run the oil from the Alberta tar sands to our refinery. So what does he want? A, a pipe that could do it for 100 times cheaper. And then he tells you to pay more taxes. And then, of course, there's Apple, another wonderful company that everyone loves so much. Headline, Apple may have to pay Ireland 10 years of back taxes. Want to hear what they've been paying in taxes? Get ready for this, all you good liberals. Apple has paid as little as 2% on profits attributed to its subsidiaries in Ireland, well below the 35% top rate in the United States, and even well below Ireland's 12.5% rate. Don't you love that? Wait, it gets even better. It gets even better. Disney is firing IT workers like the plague and hiring people from India at one half the price. Disney now. And the Department of Homeland Security says nothing. Why do you think all of these rats were screaming for the for, for immigration, including that one in the undershirt? The brat with the undershirt who got lucky from Harvard, whatever his name is, Faiselberg. Mark uh, Faiselberg. Remember Mark Faiselberg was a big mouth for illegal immigration, making them all legal? Do you think he goes to dinner with illegal immigrants? Do you think he washes the feet of illegal aliens from Tijuana like Nancy Pelosi does? He wanted B-1B visas to lower his costs. He wanted immigrants simply to shaft American workers, Mark Faiselberg. You think because these guys are worth $100 billion that they're happy? They cut your heart out for another dollars in pro dollar in profit. Here, yeah. so you see riots in Baltimore. The morons, what are they rioting? They don't even know who Freddie Gray is. Rioting. And what they steal? Toilet paper. Did you see how many pictures of the of the uh, the low lowlifes? You're not allowed to call them uh, thugs. I'll call them subhumans. If you don't like the word thug, maybe that'll apply better. Because once you go below the level of humanity, and you're not civil, you're, you're a subhuman. They break into a store. The city's burning. What does he rob? A, a jar of mouthwash and toilet paper. My dog's looking at me like I'm crazy. I'm not making this up, Teddy. Human beings are insane. They burn a city to the ground to rob toilet paper out of CVS with a jug of mouthwash. And the store is burnt to the ground. Then they'll complain that Whitey didn't rebuild the city fast enough for them. A minority city, they'll say that the whites caused them to burn the city to the ground, and they want more money to rebuild it so they can burn it to the ground again. It's a crazy world out there. Now, now couple the guy robbing toilet paper after the Baltimore riots... Toilet paper, I swear to you. Uh, well, okay, it was eight rolls of paper. You could see it was worth burning a building to the ground for that. It wasn't just one one roll of toilet paper that the uh, the uh, wonderful citizen of Baltimore stole our CVS as it burnt. It was eight to twelve. It was a twelve pack, along with mouthwash. On one side, you have the idiot robbing toilet paper after burning a city down. Doesn't work for a living. Lives on welfare. Probably deals drugs on the side. And here's another story. Sales of $100 million homes rise to record worldwide. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. I've never seen anything like the disparity. So you say, what's the answer to take the rich and eat the rich and give the money to the guy who robs toilet paper? No, the answer is to make the guy who robs toilet paper clean the gutter. That's the answer. Put them to work in public service jobs, cleaning their city, rebuilding their city. That's what you do. Here's a headline, Freddie Gray broke neck and van, no evidence injured during arrest. I don't know what to believe. The other prisoner said he was whacking himself around in the van trying to collect some money. Uh, Freddie Gray broke neck and van, no evidence injured during arrest. How do I know what the truth is? How, how, what do I know, Freddie Gray? Now, Freddie Gray from Freddie Pink. But already the whole city burnt to the ground because someone they need to know. All of a sudden, Freddie Gray was, was uh, full Savage. Warning. 
The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. We're also releasing new policies on the military-style equipment that the federal government uh, has in the past provided to state and local law enforcement agencies. And we've seen how militarized gear can sometimes give people the feeling like it was an occupying force as opposed to a force that's part of the community. Those who do not know the history are condemned to repeat it, so I'm giving you a little historical music, the Horst Vessel song of the uh, Nazi party. Uh, as a little background music, to the uh, soft-spoken president of the United States of America, circa 2014, 2015. Of course he's not a Nazi. Are you crazy? Why, there are no concentration camps. Not at all. There are no brown shirts in the streets. Not at all. It's done for, um, let us say, attracting your attention. Then maybe you'll break through the fog of confusion, doubt, and illusion. The illusion created by the grand illusionist Barack Obama. Barack Obama is the greatest illusionist in the history of the presidency. Make no mistake about it, he's a grand illusionist. And instead of screaming in German, he talks softly. And he threatens everyone in the United States of America on a daily basis with his reign of terror, while not threatening ISIS. ISIS is taking over one city after another, and he and his sorority are telling us that they don't stay awake worrying about it at night. It's nothing. But I want to play a soundbite of the worst... Almost a monster. Eric Holder is probably one of the most evil men in American history. And I want you to listen to what this demonic man said before he retired oh, a while ago. Listen to this. One cannot truly understand America without understanding the historical experience of black people in this nation. Simply put, to get to the heart of this country, one must examine its racial soul. Though this nation has proudly thought of itself as a ethnic melting pot, in things racial, we have always been, and we, I believe, continue to be, in too many ways, essentially a nation of cowards. Okay, so we're a nation of cowards because he wants a conversation on race. Well, let's have a conversation on race, on the savage nation. We've been having a conversation on race ever since Obama triggered Ferguson. We've been having a conversation on race ever since Holder and Obama triggered the burning of Baltimore. We've been having a conversation on race ever since we've seen what this administration is doing and intends to do. So I say let's continue our cowardly discussion of race on the program. And there's no better way to continue this conversation of race, uh, this, this cowardly conversation of race, than to focus on what Obama just did last night. Remember Loretta Lynch, how the Republicans put up a fake fight and said that they were going to oppose her? Well, she's now in there, and I warned you she was worse than a holder. Didn't I tell you she was going to be worse than a holder because she's a woman? She's got a double going for her. She's got a double protexia around her. So now she announces immediately, not that she's going to look into disarming the gangs in the cities, not that she's going to look into the communist front groups that were responsible for all the violence and the terrorism in our streets, but she's going to grant $163 million to these, these thuggish groups. The ACLU is a criminal organization, as you know, with law degrees. They're the cowardly side of the, of the uh, revolution. The ACLU are the cowards who hide behind law degrees. They work with the actual street thugs who do the damage. You understand how this works? So she's going to put in new guidelines in cities to teach police how to behave toward the gangs. Now, that leads us to the Gestapo is born. Upon becoming Chancellor of Germany, Adolf Hitler had appointed Hermann Göring as Minister of the Interior for the State of Prussia. As Minister of the Interior, Göring thereby had control of the police. That's the Attorney General. She's, the, she's the, fundamentally the Minister of the Interior. The Attorney General is our Minister of the Interior. So in Germany, Göring had control of the police. She doesn't have control of our local police because we have a constitution, we have state governments, which are supposed to function separately from the federal government to avoid a dictatorship. 
but we have a man who was a madman in the White House, surrounded by demagogues who want to take over every aspect of our lives. The first thing Goring did was to prohibit regular, uniformed police from interfering with Nazi brown shirts out in the streets. So I said, well, what does that have to do with America? There are no Nazi brown shirts. Yes, there are. They're the gangs. They're the thugs who just burnt Baltimore. They are the brown shirts. They burnt Baltimore. First they tried Ferguson and they got away with it. Then they had the president covering for them, putting out the false narrative of the gentle giant, who was actually a criminal, trying to kill a cop. So he covered for them, and these thugs are now controlling Ferguson and Baltimore. And so let's go back again to history, Goring. First thing he did was prohibit regular uniformed police from interfering with Nazi brown shirts out in the streets. This meant that innocent German citizens had no one to turn to as they were being beaten up by rowdy, young stormtroopers. Well, do we have stormtroopers? No, we don't have rowdy, young stormtroopers. We have rowdy, young thugs, inner city thugs. And what did these young stormtroopers do? These young Nazi toughs took full advantage of police leniency to loot shops at will and terrorize Jews or anyone else unfortunate enough to be caught in the wrong place at the wrong time. Well, did they loot in Ferguson? You betcha. Did they loot in Baltimore? You betcha. Did they terrorize people? You betcha. So what's the parallel, boys and girls? The Gestapo was born in Germany. Obama is giving birth to a Gestapo in America. His gangs are called victims. The police are called thugs. He's reversed everything. Now, that's that's just one topic. Now, we have another story that I have to talk about. I've still not seen any photographs or video, even B-roll, of the so-called killing of Abu Sayyaf, the key ISIS figure, killed in a daring U.S. raid by Delta forces, where all of our troops returned safely. They even captured his wife. And they captured heavy intelligence. I'd like to believe it's true, but given that Obama's a liar, and given that this report about this special operations raid in eastern Syria overnight came after they took another city, I think it's just as likely to be Capricorn 1 and propaganda. I hope I'm wrong. But what good did it do? They took him. Let's say they did take him. The next day, the next city fell. And here's another question about the so-called war being run by the Gulf moron in the White House, Satan. Are you ready for this one? The victory parade after they took Ramadi. I'm talking about ISIS. A column a half a mile long of their pickup trucks with machine guns. One A-10 could have wrecked the entire column, destroyed them. One sortie by one airplane could have wiped out the entire column. Why the hell didn't Obama launch that A-10? Because they're on our side. I am telling you right now that this is the biggest scam in your life. There's no explanation for this. And further proof to my suspicion that ISIS is actually being funded by the United States government is this. Do you remember the Pentagon asked the media to scrap old footage of ISIS columns? Did you hear this? Do you remember what they said? Pentagon spokesmouth Colonel Stephen Warren said, please stop using stock footage that makes the terror army seem more mobile and more formidable than they say it actually is. He said they don't travel like that anymore. And he said, quote, one Toyota speeding down the road by itself at night with his headlights off would be a more accurate image. Really, Mr. Spokesman Colonel Stephen Warren, yesterday I saw a column of Toyotas a half a mile long, and you and your brave air boys did nothing. They were told to stand down the same way they were told to stand down at Benghazi by the... I don't know. I can't say it. I really would like to say what I don't know understand how the Republicans let him get away with it. The answer is because they're the same. Don't you understand there is no Republican Party? There's no Democrat Party? Don't you understand yet that it's a single block of a ruling class and we're the moron serfs? And it's so bad that if my suspicion is correct, that ISIS is an arm of the United States government, in other words, a proxy army, that we, the citizens of this country, by permitting the charlatan in the White House to get away with the charade of a war against ISIS, we are responsible for the kidnappings, we're responsible for the rapes of children, we're responsible for the slavery of non-Muslims. We are the devil themselves for letting this character get away with it without demanding more. Now, of course, you say, what can I do? I understand that. You saw the George Staphylococcus, 
is nothing but a paid whore. We understood that from day one. Did he ever look like anything but a paid whore? I mean, you're shocked that he's a paid whore and gave money 